shut up, you listen to my monkey mouth. As a companion, when you got pun on the canoe route, hopped in a portal and got in a fight. Elias knocked him out. Bow, Naruto fighting style. Bow, you will see he tapped out. Bow, we win, we get crowned. Monkey mouth, monkey mouth, monkey mouth, monkey mouth. All right, man. Welcome to SUIL. We just got done doing an amazing. We watched. Now I've got a guest yeah. here. Can you introduce yourself? Yeah, Adam Bowles, uh, comic here in Austin. I'm on uh, Instagram at uh, Adam the Comic, and I've been in Austin for a year. I've been at the comedy game for three years. Um, I met you guys at one of my show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, up in Pflugerville with Ozzy Moon. Yeah, Ozzy's and, a trip, man. I, yeah. I I enjoy Ozzy's comedy immensely. He's just a really cool cat. Yeah, Ozzy yeah. kills it every yeah. time. Absolutely. Every, every time he kills it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm actually working with him on a couple of creative projects on the back end right now that, yeah. I'm, that I'm really, really excited about. And he kind of, I'm kind of trying to ride that coattail as hard as possible. Oh, yeah, you're going to get to yeah, be a part yeah, of it. Yeah, you're yeah. going to get to be a part of it. And sure. so, uh, man, he's I'm really good with the crowd work. He too. really is, yeah. He's, roasting the crowd. Yeah, he's definitely one. I the think, first like, time I ever saw him, he just started roasting the crowd so hard. I know that, like, he is, he, like, oh, even yeah. as yeah. much as he knows us, it, he doesn't let that, like, let you slide on that. He was yeah. just like, we were there at the hookah lounge, and he was just like, immediately like i think i said something off and he was like that's it that's the word that i'm going to kind of like use to to consistently mess with this this individual here yeah which was great i love it i'm not one to shy away or, or be upset about that that's yeah. one of the best things that's why i prefer being around com- a comedian comics I've, I've seen ozzy ruffle some feathers though like yeah it's, it, it's funny how uh most comedians are like really thick-skinned yeah but then occasionally you come into one that's just like so sensitive well, like some of these right. guys, like some of them are just like, what are you doing as a comedian? Like, right. Why, why, like, did you really think that you were never gonna get roasted as a comedian? Like, yeah. Bro, what the fuck? Like, there, chill out, man. Like, there it's, was it's all a, fun. a particular comedian that came to Taylor, and it was I, I can't remember his name, but his joke was about creating the sunroof in his trailer by trying to hang himself. You remember that guy? You remember him? Fucking fantastic. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, you remember him? He was amazing. I absolutely adore this guy. Uh, so he was over at the at the hookah lounge, and he did that that particular like, you know, that bit. That bit. Thank yeah. you. Inside the 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 greenhouse, you know, cafe Black Sparrow, and it immensely bombed so hard and brought the room down to like this like dark depressive level. Yeah. And I think I'm like the only one like <laughs> like. Like the Joker laughing at inappropriate times on the on the the movie when like nobody else is laughing and like yeah. he's just like laughing at the word like the the times that nobody else is. That's me laughing so hard at this. Like, yeah, the good thing about having a trailer is like, uh, you know, there's no steady beam. So when I hung myself, I actually made myself a skylight or some kind of thing like that. And it's just this like beautiful like joke that just yeah. like to me was amazing. I mean, fuck, you're not even funny. And yeah. You were told it. They got a good laugh yeah. out of me. So, like, yeah. whoever told that fucking joke, yeah, he's, you're all right. Yeah, he, and right. he was at, he was the one who, uh, when we went to the hookah lounge, he was, he dropped Ozzy off and he picked up a 30 minute set. I don't know if you remember him from the last time we were there. Uh, Jesse. Jesse, yeah. Jesse James. Yeah. He's the one who did that? Yeah, he's the one who was rolling his cigarettes he's all so night. He's so fucking skinny. There's no way he actually wore <laughs> <horrible. laughs> It's just like, yeah. That guy just... weighs a total of, like, my left nut slash right leg. Like, that guy, that guy is he, he's, a, good, a good breeze. He's, a, he's, a, he's definitely yeah. a Western cat. Like, he was just rolling cigarettes all night. Like, yeah. I, I can respect a cat like that. So, you were talking, like, you were talking about your idea for, because we were talking about Prey, and so you brought up your idea for, like, the best, like, what really good Batman movie. Oh, my God, movie. my horror, my, my horror yeah. Batman yeah. movie. Yeah. yeah. And so, like, that was, that's, like, it was such a great I idea. I that so bad. My so. idea for, the for like, a really good Batman movie, and I think I've told people this consistently, and it's got kind of like a, eh, okay, but, like, when Aurora happened, I think it was Aurora. There was a there was an incident that happened during one of the uh, Batman movies where it was like yeah. I think, and so that particularly at the time was the same time that I was thinking of this like particular movie idea and I was okay. like man this that's kind of like just put like complete damper on any type of person who's gonna make this but it was a my idea was a guy who goes through a a, a mental snap okay. and so when he sees himself in the mirror he sees the paint and the green hair and the and the clown suit. But when you pan out, it's essentially just a normal guy. So he's like, he's just like, almost like falling down or the real, jo- like the new Joker movie. But instead of him being like it, 
clowned up and like dressed up. He's just like you know black t shirt jeans kind of person, you know. Yeah. And when he looks at himself in the mirror, his mental snap is that now he sees himself as the Joker. Okay. And instead of doing like horrible Joker style, like you know things that the Joker has done that seems like really bad, it would be more of the like madcap. 1950s 19 like just trolling yeah just tro- just, yeah just so trolling and he and he finds a detective that was like that like at that like at the wrong place and wrong time coffee shop kind of thing and he's like oh that's my batman and so when he sees him he's got the he's got the cape and he's the dark knight yeah. and so he's like consistently screwing with this man and making his life a living hell okay and so at you've the, got a dude who is yeah. really the joker yeah going out and harassing someone who isn't really Batman. Yeah. But in his okay. mind's eye, he is. Yeah. He is. And I just think okay. that that would be just like a, a really funny idea where like he yeah. he has to take this guy down because now he's become pretty much like a, a, a nuisance or a menace to this like small my, town. I feel like my favorite like interaction of that whole experience would be the guy who isn't Batman realizing that he's being treated as Batman. Yeah, like, exactly. Yeah. And, Bro, what the fuck? What do I do here? Like, yeah, yeah, do I just I love do? the, like, when I was thinking of the idea, I just love the fact that, like, when, when you pan out, you li- like you literally see these two normal guys having an interaction. Yeah. But when in his mind, he's doing the, <laughs> you know, he's doing, like, the like the Joker-style, like, exaggerations and laughing and, yeah. you know, saying horrible one-liners. But and when you pan yeah, out, yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. normal dialogue of him just, like, harassing this guy on the street, you know? So, we were you were also talk you were t- also talking about like we were you know, when y'all were discussing on the ones who woke up, one thing about the Batman movie that was like the trilogy, which was like the Dark Knight Rises, or yeah. the, the Batman Begins, the Dark Knight Rises, and then uh, the last one, yeah. the middle trilogy, the middle that one with the Joker was kind of an allegory for like the uh, the Bush administration and okay. using the cell phone technology that was made through Wayne Enterprises right. was kind of like the uh, like the pa- it was a Patri- the Patriot Act okay. so that's essentially what that movie was about okay. and since he was an ultra capitalist and you were talking about the way that he kind of like is taking down Poison Ivy and Poison Ivy isn't actually a bad person like she isn't a bad guy she's cloaked into she's the just to she's the just plants. trying to protect the plants yeah right. and and by any means necessary so like BP needs yeah. to get got <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Tell you. yeah yeah so uh, there, there's a that's what that's one thing that I really enjoyed about the whole movie is that you you find these things like the guy the guy the guy who made Transformers and Con Air yeah and that that I can't think of his name like he's, Michael Bay Michael Bay like yeah. he's an uber Republican okay. like like that if you yeah you, rich. yeah if you so you ever watch like Con Air like he's, I don't think I've seen it he, yeah. he he's like a good old boy whose hands are a weapon. Yeah. And he kills like a drunk and he goes to jail because like as a Marine, he should have known that his hands were a weapon, right. you know, and then he's like supposed to be going home. And now he's up against the, the like a plane full of like, you know, hardened criminals, Basically, serial the, killers, the, the, the airplane full of criminals take over the airplane. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and, and even the criminals are played up as like one's a rapist and the other one's like. Uh, a, uh, like a serial killer, real bad guy. Yeah, right? yeah. This guy just like got his bar Yeah, money. and yeah. so, and then they 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 fly into like capitalist mecca, which is like Vegas, and they fuck shit up there. Yeah. And it's just it's 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 definitely like a capitalist based movie. Yeah. Where like the the titular character is just a good old boy trying to get home, and he comes up against like all of these like you know things that 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 would seem like the dregs of society that yeah. that Democrats would be like. You know, not in my town, you know, and you were also talking to, about like, you know, I think you said something that was really like uh, Dallas. When I think of the, the, the dichotomy between Dallas and Austin, I think yeah. of like if you ever go to Dallas and you were asking like why the roads are so good, it's because like if you ever see the movie Dallas, that's that's all the show. The show. Yeah, yeah. the show. I'm sorry. Yeah. The show Dallas. Yeah. The, the whole point of the show Dallas was to literally show uh, it was like absorbent amount of wealth come from oil, right? Right, right? So that's particularly why that place is probably so well taken care of. Because right. the money that's there is old oil money, yeah. you know, probably old ranching money that retired in Dallas, yeah. you know, so that's particularly why. And then you have Austin that is, you know, isn't it, it it's not that it's it's not that it isn't rich, but it's a different kind of rich. We're, right. We were, we, we for years were like, keep Austin weird, yeah. you know, I think was it California had that crazy woman driving around in a pink Lambert or a pink, like a pink uh, what is that Cadillac. Cadillac convertible, and that was like her. There she was like 
California's like weird person. And we had that. Okay. We had that cross dressing guy. That R.I.P. Leslie. Yeah, we had. We, R.I.P. Yeah, Leslie. Yeah, are you we, familiar with? Are you familiar no. with Leslie? Yeah. So Leslie was an attorney okay. in Austin who lost a real bullshit case, okay. like to the state, like to the city, like clearly got fucked, and it made him really upset. And so he was like, "Fuck it, I'm not going to even play the game no more. Okay. I'm just going to fucking." He still had a house. He had enough money to have a house, but he would just walk yeah. the streets in a dress, yeah, and cross dress and be an eccentric ass character. And so he that, was like, he's like literally like the poster board for like keep Austin weird. Right. He almost got elected mayor. Yeah, he was, he was, he was within a hundred votes of being. What was mayor. this? This was, I mean, early in, early nineties and two thousand, mid two thousands, whenever yeah. that happened. Okay. Mm-hmm. Whenever he almost got elected yeah. mayor, and so he like, passed away like maybe five years ago, right? Six years so, ago. I mean, it's been, I mean, it's been a long time. It's been a minute, it's, right? It starts moving faster the older we get. Yeah, but, uh, it really does. He got, uh, man, it's like not a pleasant thing that happened. He got like uh, jumped. Up yeah, in the, I think in it the did. street and beat up and like went into a coma and died yeah. in the hospital. It was a real shitty deal. So like that, 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 and that's the, the, that's really the dichotomy. Like, and you were talking about Sixth Street. Sixth Street for me has a lot of like it's changed so much it was always there was always a tinge of danger on 6th street but not to the not to the level that it's become in the last like 10 years you know yeah there and there was really like and even like the the i was never really too concerned with the lgbtq plus community in taylor they had they had oil can harry's and butterfly kisses or whatever that one was called there was like a ton of like positive lgbtq plus uh spots i mean there's a there there's definitely more it's moving in a direction positive for them, but there was definitely some positive locations that were very, that were very, um, very accepting. accepting of them in Austin. Yeah. So if you couldn't find acceptance in your local area, and Taylor for some point for some, for for any reason, one of them being that we have a really positive person who's moving it in the right direction is very accepting. Taylor yeah. is very accepting of uh, the LGBTQ plus culture to the point where I actually did that's a the thing, bro. I think that everybody everywhere is generally super accepting. Yeah, I think that there's just like a s- really... small minority. Yeah, who's and, vocal. I, and I, think well, the... that, I think it isn't even that they're super vocal. I think that they're just uh, misrepresented in the news. Like, yeah, I think that if you were to take a percentage of the amount of times that those vocal minorities are represented in the news yeah. versus the actual percentage of the population that they represent. They're right. getting 50% of the airtime, but they're only 1% of the population. And this is a thing that comes up in, in society a bunch of these days. Everyone's like, things are so bad. Yeah. Like, bro, you realize that like fewer people are starving on the planet today than ever before? Right. Yeah. You realize that fewer people are dying from war on the planet today than ever before? Right. You fewer people are dying from disease today yeah. on the planet than ever before? Like, yeah. people are fucking and even with the... longer and happier than ever before. It's just our ability to see it. Yeah. Has been so, I mean, it's, it, we're literally evolving into a global society where the interconnectivity of ourselves, I mean, like, bro, I can see a video of someone in India doing, I mean, I can see a fucking live stream from India on my fucking cell phone whenever I want, I mean, on the literal other side of the planet. Yeah. Well, the and funny so thing is, is like that, it's, it, it's just, you're, the, the microscope is really fine tuned and we can see it. He yeah. bring he loves, he loves a psychedelic culture, but one thing that we can agree on is that we both love Bill Hicks. And I think it was like yeah. Bill Hicks may have said it. I know that it was one of those particular. I can confirm that Bill Hicks is not out. <laughs> yeah. I, so. I, I, <laughs> yeah. I, I know some of the people who, uh, were paid to investigate him privately. Uh, you know, he's like in the middle of that big court, everything right now. Right. So like a bunch of that data that they're like using on him currently is like stuff that was acquired by like people that I know. And I was able to like. I love that they dropped the ball. So I, well, I, was, I, I wouldn't I, say I, I they didn't drop the. I was like, is that fucking Bill Hicks? Yeah. Like, I don't need to know anything else about this man. I don't care about his cocaine habit. I don't care about how many hor- how many hookers he's fucking killed. All I care about is is that man really Bill Hicks or not. And they were able to like pretty con- they were able to pretty concretely there was like, confirmed to me and like put at rest. My, I mean, cause I was like, I asked every question. I was like, Are you sure? Are you fucking double sure? Yeah. And like, no, nah, I'm pretty sure that like. Well, Bill Alex Hicks. Jones is Alex Jones. I can't remember what I was gonna say, but Bill Hicks basically said something along the lines of like, "What was it? What were we talking about before?" I don't know, but I know that Bill Hicks would go into a character that was Alex Jones. Yeah. Like, like if you yeah. go back and watch, like, whenever he would start, like, doing, like, his satire in the middle of his stand-up about, like, yeah. a conservative news anchor. Yeah. It's fucking Alex Jones. Like, motherfucking, I don't know if Alex Jones, like, saw that Bill Hicks stand-up and was like, that's well, I mean, where I'm going to be. Well, that, well I mean, that was about the time he was coming up, right? Like, Bill Hicks, I think, died in, like, 93. Yeah. And so, it, and so it, like, coincides with Alex's, well, like, it was like, very it was like, career. It, it was like, it, it, dude, there's so many things that line up. Like, I was convinced. I was like, that's fucking Alex, but yeah. Alex Jones is for sure Bill Hicks, like for sure. For when sure. it comes to the like how hard, time. I guess the prosecuting or the the uh, the like how hard, jo- like uh, Alex Jones's attorneys 
just refused to pick up the ball that they were giving him. Like, you've given us this information, you can have it back. You've given us this information, you can have it back. There is a huge tinge of it as being like just completely wanting to torch this. Like, like one, like I mean, they had so many opportunities to retrieve that information from the prosecuting attorney, and they just they would not answer emails. So, they would not answer. I saw that Alex Jones is worth two hundred and seventy million dollars. How are you worth two hundred and seventy million dollars and can't get decent legal representation? Who will at least fucking respond to emails from the persecuting team? Right. Like, like. Well, I mean, that's why he lost the original case, right? Is for like not producing evidence, right? No, not, so like, so one thing that he so participating in discovery. he was yeah he wasn't participating in discovery was was one of the reasons why right. he had gotten in a lot of trouble. Yeah. And then they did like they, they then on the next one they did like a huge digital dump. They did like a huge. I heard about. Yeah, that. they did like a huge. Like accidentally. Yeah. Well. Right? Well. Yeah. Well. No. It was accidentally on purpose. I guess I would say because there was like certain things that they were supposed to digitally dump. Okay. So it was like if but they, they but it was like oh we want files A B and C and then they were like oh Game here's the entire ABC. alphabet yeah, yeah here's the entire alphabet and then the then the prosecuting attorney was like hey we only wanted A B and C we've got the entire alphabet here come and pick up the rest of the alphabet or you've got you've got six weeks. You've got six weeks, and then we're gonna you, we're gonna take. I don't think it was six weeks. Well, I'm just using a significantly I'm, shorter period. Of time I'm just using that, a vague like time limit. Yeah. Like it's ambiguous not ambiguous period. Yeah, time. ambiguous yeah. period. Yeah. Of fucking time. yeah, yeah, yeah ambiguous, a- ambiguous amount of time okay. that, and you have to pick up the rest of these letters. Yeah. Or we're gonna throw the whole alphabet at you. Yeah. And it was just so like, like this will be used against you yeah. in court if you and, don't take it from us. And then they were consistently like dodging emails and phone calls until finally like yeah like. Alex Jones is there, and they're like, uh, "We have, we have, like, we have introduced new evidence." And he's like, "Well, that's that's this is your Perry Mason moment. I yeah. wasn't lying about it." I love that they're like, uh, yeah. "Like, bro, you know how to use the search function on yeah. your iPhone? Yeah, and we did a simple search through your text messages, and we could see where you were like blatantly lying about yeah. the contents of your text messages, buddy." Right. So, is it, yeah, it, it was it was a it was. I wouldn't say it was accidentally on purpose. It was just them being so lazy and probably thinking that it was just going to be a slam dunk case or they maybe got a little How bit of hub- a hubris or some kind of like something. I mean, there. they just have to be like believing Alex Jones's bullshit. Like, I'm a good guy. I've never said any of that. I'm like, okay, yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. All the text messages then. Well, I mean, that's the problem with hiring a yes man, right? Yeah. Like, or sycoph- sycophants, right? Because like, there's a parallel to Trump, right? Like, Trump couldn't, couldn't get a better attorney than Rudy Giuliani and Michael Cohen and all these jokers, like, you know? But like, you also, you also for... like, introduce the people that you, you're like, like, you're gonna, you're gonna surround yourself around the people who you are under the cloak of your mask, right? So, like, we, we bode well together because there's certain aspects of our life that we kind of, like, can work well together on. He is a joker. He is a, he's a swindler. He's a thief. At the end of the day, and so he a feather flock. Yeah, feather. exactly. Right. So like you sure. get you 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 get what you paid for or whatever he says on the. Well, he like, never paid anybody. Well, so. I'm saying like, <laughs> you like you know, Alex Jones? no Trump. Trump. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, so that's Trump, was, that's Trump was like Trump was Trump was a like a, a master of, of like like just swindling construction well, workers. Yeah, his, his whole deal was like. I can legally get away with not paying you, and I can legally drag you through the small claims yeah. process to the point, or like through the legal process to the point that you're going to expire before yeah. you ever actually squeeze this money out of me. Yeah. Well, he's the and only like, like the when people say like when you were so saying shitty, like but again that's yeah. like where we were talking earlier in the other podcasts about where uh, morality and ethics don't necessarily align with what's legal. Right. right. Like clearly, you shouldn't be able to like weaponize the legal process to to keep small time individual contractors from getting paid their due money. Yeah. Um, and yet Trump gets away with that. And uh, it's wild to me that, like, uh, his supporters are, like, so cool with that. It's like, well, it's legal. You know what I'm saying? It's like it, like th- there's an entire subsect of people who, like, truly, truly believe. Well, you also have to understand. That what is right. Like, like yeah. the state knows what's good. And if the state says that this is legal or illegal, yeah. that means it's right or wrong. And, like, we can just, like, put our thoughts aside. And blindly follow like the the direction of the state, and like those are the type of people who are like, oh yeah, Trump's all right because he did stuff that was legal. And it's like, mm-hmm. bro, it doesn't take a goddamn ethicist to understand that like yeah. this dude's doing like shitty dog shit stuff. When yeah. when you go back and, and you all are. They all when, are. when you all are. Joe Joe Biden's out here fucking breaking bread with the Ukrainians so his son can get a fucking quarter million dollar a year job at a yeah. bullshit company so he can just do crack with Ukrainian horse. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, it's Absolutely. bad. It's well, bad everywhere you look. It's just... Absolutely. Like, my thing is... I hate Uniparty, it. you know? Like one of the things that bothers me is how if you try and speak 
negatively against a politician, they automatically like assume that like you're a, like like I like to talk shit about Joe Biden. Yeah. And people are automatically like, you feel like you're MAGA hat Trump person? Yeah. Like, bro, fuck Trump. Like, fuck all of them. Bro. Well, the thing about it is, is when it side, when it comes yeah. down to it, you, you they everyone assumes that you're down this party line. To the point where now they're like, oh, we're going to create a third party. And at the end of the day, we don't need a third party. We need correction in the parties that exist. What we need is a bunch of guillotines in front of the houses (laughs) of politicians and and billionaires. I'm telling you, bro, if we just, I'm telling you, if us three just got together and started putting guillotines up in front of billionaires' houses, first off, it's in a real strong list. (sighs) But secondly, we could etch into the side of that guillotine that when that guillotine lops off that billionaire's head, we get 3% of their entire wealth. 1%, 1%, 1%, right? And guess what? What's 1% of fucking $40 billion? Some, like, incalculable amount of money that, like, doesn't even matter. Like, you're fucking rich at that point, and we have one in front of every billionaire's house, and we could be the change you want to see in the world. Well, you were talking about... Billionaire heads could roll, and we could get rich. Well, you were talking about how, how, you know, Bill Gates is buying up whole swaths of land, and he just got called out on that. Yeah. Through through court systems, but it's just like he only got called out on that because there was enough people being like, "I don't like this." Right. If he would have just been like, what did you, "I love how you say that," moving moving quiet like lasagna. What oh, is yeah, that saying? Real, real G's moving silence like lasagna. Yeah, if he would have just kept on doing that, that's a little Wayne lyric. You know, in all honesty, nobody would have said a single thing except with, with everything. Well, that's the virtue signal. Though, and, right? and well, and he got greedy. He got greedy. He gets yeah. greedy. He gets greedy with everything. He, he's 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 essentially he's muck banging everything. Well, so here's the, the problem. So, the problem is that like the the firms that he's a chairman of and the places where like he's like professionally engaged are places that are publicly traded. Yeah. And when you're publicly traded, like you as a member of the executive team are beholden to the quarterly returns of your shareholders. Of course. And like, yeah. and, like and so if they send in an auditor, right? Like us three yeah. are like running a Fortune 500 company. We like want to do right. We're like fucking. Yeah. We got this big organization. It's making all the money in the world. We can make slightly less money and like do things in an ethical way so that like it's getting money to the people who are actually providing stuff and like yeah. do right business, right? They would bring in auditors, and they'd be able to go. Well, we can calculate, matter of factly, where because these guys did this in this moral and ethical way, it yeah. turned into a. Uh, a less positive return on your quarterly statement, right? Like, we can prove mathematically yeah. where they consciously chose to run the thing in a manner that wasn't as profitable as it could be ran. Right. And at that point, you can be held criminally liable. Right. Well, the, like, the, you're a, like, you understand that, that if you, don't, yeah. if you don't fucking juice this planet as the executive of Fortune 500 company as effectively as you can, you're literally a criminal. So you but remember... If you and, but if you try and... Yeah, but if you're a shitbag and fucking fuck over everybody, then, like, you're just doing good well, business. Did you... Right, do you y'all guys remember... You the bonuses. Do y'all remember the... Well, of course I know y'all remember it, but do y'all know, like, y'all kind of have, like, a... Still a kind of, like, reminiscence of your mind of the housing crisis in the early... T- like, the mid-2000s, like, the... Yeah. You know, the big short and all that other stuff? Yeah. One man went to jail. A single man went to prison. One man. He was he was essentially everything was laid upon the feet of one man. Yeah, it was mega patsy. Yeah, assuming that this one man deserved to go to prison at any given time when there was literally golden parachutes handed out to uh, what is it? You know, like what is it? Wells Fargo and uh, Merrill Lynch and all of these all of these like billionaire companies were just. I got bored uh and did the math on how much money each one of us would have gotten if they'd taken that money from the 08 bailout and given it to the American people. Yeah. Every American, from newborn baby to vegetable on life support, would have gotten over $300,000 cash in their pocket. That's how much money we spent. Think about that. There's 380 million Americans, and we all could have gotten $300,000 for the amount of money. But, that but, how would that have, but how would that have helped them get more yachts? Well, at the end of the day, we would have fucking spent the money, right? Like, we would have spent the money in, like, what what housing crisis, right? Like, yeah. if I had $300,000, I wouldn't have bought a house. Well, right. the thing, the, the, the thing that house that... GMs the, going the, 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 GM, GM's going under. I wouldn't have bought me a new Chevy with $300,000. Well, I would have bought a house and a truck right well, then. The, the thing about it is is that they don't really care about that stuff, right? Because they can... they can, they can the, 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 the market is a, is a free-flowing <coughs> group of ideas that doesn't really matter at the be, at the end of the beginning of the day because now the new housing crisis is is that we have companies we have software companies we have fortune 500 companies we have companies buying up whole swaths of uh, 
of land and houses so that there's never we're we're I really, I really we're do gonna, believe that we need to litigate it so that the land is prioritized for the people. Mm-hmm. Like I don't think that I don't think it's appropriate that large corporations can come in and buy up every square inch of land that's left, right? Because by the time our kids are our age, there's not going to be any land left if it keeps going the way it's going. Don't just be permanent renters. Exactly. Yeah, exactly, and, and that's what's and going so, on now. So I don't, I don't yeah. think that the, I don't think that the concept of land ownership ought to be lost on the individual because corporations are. But now you're talking like a communist, right? I mean, I'm just kidding, but you well, know I mean, what I'm you know saying. Like, talking like communists are the goddamn politicians who fucking bailed out corporations. I don't understand. I'm a business owner. Yeah. If fucking Monkey Mouse Studios goes down, guess what? We're fucked. Yeah. So, in you realize that if Chevy had just gone down, yeah, four fucking car makers would have popped up in their head. Yeah. Tesla would be way fucking further ahead right now with one less competitor in the marketplace. Well, you know and like, the, we, have you ever, so if you I, ever, if you ever like, I, I, let me say this. Yeah. The thing that I don't like is that we get cold hard capitalism for individuals but socialism for corporations like that's 100 fucking bullshit yeah. the airlines never make any money they're consistently in the red we are constantly bailing out subsidizing them. subsidizing them. yeah them. we subsidize them and the worst part about it is is that they're consistently cool ma- that. like you understand that, like it's a social service well it's, it's not a problem i'm, so, I'm, I'm so just cool saying like i'm cool with my tax dollars going to keeping airplanes afloat. yeah the problem is that whenever the airplanes aren't afloat because the fucking executive team between the six of them are making $4 billion a year. And it's like, bro, that's where the fucking fuel money went. On top like, of that, like, though. Bro, like, that, like, I don't understand how I would be willing to subs- get away with that. I would so be willing annoying. to subsidize them. Not that I even like flying or that I've been on an airplane, but this is for anybody else who likes to fly. When you consistently make flying an unwanted experience, right? And it's, it's also because the masses are able to fly. Like when you hear, like, what happened to the classic flying? What happened to the, the the classic ability of like men in suits and it being nice to fly? Yeah. Well, the reason why it was is because flying was reserved for it was, for, was, it was a, yeah. yeah it was reserved, but now it's there's it's open to all I mean, walks. I can, I can get to Vegas and back for hundred Yeah, bucks. exactly. So so in that Don't point, in that point, mm-hmm. you're 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 opening up it to a large swath of the individual. So of course, the individual no longer is going to dress. You're going to get average people flying average paying average consumer prices to get a subpar mcdonald's style you know sears airline experience. airline experience and that's the truth of it is because if you want you know it's like whenever someone tells me that a particular so you mean it's been stripped down for capital gain yeah exactly or the funny thing is is like whenever you it's hear like obvious. you hear like a rapper I mean, just for fucking to put a nail on yeah. it for yeah. the people on the camera well the like, funny thing is like when you hear now. like a rapper getting mad that like louis vuitton or you know Chanel doesn't want them shopping in their experience. They don't need your money. Do you understand that they right. that they that and it's so funny because like the new song of like now is I think it's Lizzo talking about um there's like a there's like a song and she she talks about Balenciaga mm-hmm. and her vans of Balenciaga shoes. And I was just watching a thing uh, like a clip on YouTube and it was like the big 4. So it was like it was like Valenciasi, Hugo Boss, uh, what is that? Louis Vuitton, and then another company were all working for the Nazis, yeah. and the, and this is a and I know that like with time sheds, they're not, they're not working for the Nazis. They're working for themselves, offering their services to anybody who's willing to pay for it. Yeah, right? yeah, right. But the thing is, is that like, but over time, that thing sheds, and then we have Lizzo talking about her Valenciasi shoes. Not knowing that, like, and for you know, we like you you pull that mask back, and it's just the 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 it's not even about corruption. It's just finding the buck, and the buck was making suits for monsters systematically running rampant through I mean, Europe. I mean, right? let's be frank. I mean, the guys who build our railroads are the people who built the railroad to Auschwitz. Yeah, the right? guys who run Volkswagen were literally German war machines. I mean, yeah, like, right. the, shit's, the shit's all over the place. The cabin. Everyone needs to understand that, like, the the thousand people who run the world are the people who own all the corporations who own everything. Yeah. And well, so and they Coca- don't give a fuck. They don't give a flying fuck where it goes. Like, they're unified under one flag, and that's the acquisition of greenbacks. Yeah. Uh-huh. And if that means fucking tanking an entire country, because it the, doesn't matter which side. Remember, it's a board game, right? right? And we're just moving pieces on the board. And it doesn't matter which one of us actually yeah. wins the game, because we were extracting cash and enjoyment out well, of the Well, the funny thing was, is like, 
It was like yeah. Coke Coke comes to some some semblance of like wow, like we kind of had our name attached to a really bad incident and then Germans are like, "But we really like your soda." It was like, "All right, we made this thing called Fanta and it's through the subsidiary company that's like Coca-Cola, so you can still have our delicious Coca-Cola, but we really don't want our name associated with the with the, the Germans. We, we don't want the bad PR, but we want your fucking money. <laughs> yeah, right. so, like, you can have Fanta, which is this new company that essentially sells the same kind of sugary, addictive soda, and we get to, like, step away from the bad publicity that is selling to the Germans, you know? Right. And it's the same thing. It's, like, over time, you know, every people own BMWs, people own Volkswagen, and, and it's just, it's so funny. I mean, because, what was it, Volks, uh, BMW just got into, like, a big problem with them, like, lying about, I think, was it, like, admissions tests? It was really funny. Like, they were just completely lying oh, about... That was Volkswagen, that was Volkswagen right? Volkswagen yeah. Was Volkswagen was yeah, just, Volkswagen like, completely... Yeah, shit, yeah. They were lying about their admissions tests and, like, how green their, their, their cars were. Yeah. And it was just absolutely amazing. I mean, it was just... It was, it was true capitalism at its best. It was, like, you know... It's like, oh, you want a thing? All right, this is that thing. It isn't really that thing, but fuck you, bye. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, that's the thing. Like, corporations, like, use social justice cynically. Oh, it's the know? best, right? Yeah. So, like, they'll advertise something as green when it really isn't green, but their publicity is so good. So, like, electric vehicles, for example. Like, if the electricity that comes to power that vehicle is from coal, like... Is that really better than fossil fuels? They did the math and they were finding out. They did the math and that they found out that to power to essentially, it's 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 not even at offsetting it because you're using more. Your, fossil fuels you're to moving, produce the to car. Produce the, well, not just to produce the car, I'm but to, right to charge the car. I'm so that tell you all right now, it takes a lot more burnt coal releasing CO2 yeah. into the yeah. atmosphere to charge that battery up. And yeah. that's what they were saying. They, they did the they, they did the emissions. Just run your car. Right. Yeah, but I mean, I I get where they're coming from. It's well, what they a, want is they want to a, they, they, they like, especially they, when you start dealing with it at scale. You well, know what I'm saying? like whenever you're doing stuff for like an entire planet, that's when it starts getting. Really how much of it is the road to hell is paved with good intentions? Because you hear them saying, "Well, we just," want, but it's not true. I mean, I'm I'm being kind here. The road to hell is paved with good intentions. They want to kick us in the ass and make us buy electric vehicles, but we're in a recession. We're practically in a depression. Did, did this guy just try and act like big Fortune 500 corporations have good intentions? No, I'm not saying they had like, good intentions. I'm no, saying, he's saying like going green is a good intention, but I'm telling you right now that if a that if a fucking Fortune 500 company says we're going green, there's no good intention behind. No, it. no, no, no. Not. But it's the same. But it's that veil of good intention of of like Chase having a LGBT. Like marketing so yeah, good. yeah, yeah. It's like Chase. Did you? I don't know if y'all saw that meme where it was just like it was it was Chase Morgan with the with like the the LGBT flag, and then it was the next. It was like like March like march 1st and then you just see the guy like like basically military folding up the lgbt flag and saying all right see you next next year Uh you know Uh it's essentially the same thing it's like they're bringing out the green energy they're waving the flag for the brief period of time where they can just fold it up and be like okay now we're gonna we're gonna take on this let me tell you my perspective on as someone who's like been i mean i've been running my own business for my whole life basically my entire adult life i've been like a capitalist and uh it's not even like good marketing it's like being shitty enough to be willing to lie and be a predator. Because yeah. no one's ever authenticating those claims, right? Like, no, no one's ever authenticating your claims. Unless no. you get big enough to where, like, scientists are, like, looking at it for shits and giggles. Or, like, you're but, saying... Well, no, they, authentic, they authenticate the claims when it goes against the narrative, is what it is. Who? Anybody. They, if you're going against the narrative that they've picked out in any particular point... Well, I'll tell you right now, then, if, that you're, they, the, if you're the corporation, you control the narrative. That's what I'm saying. So and if so you're well, going, so, well, so no one's ever going to fact check it. They, you, that's what I'm saying the is they're fact checking the things that don't bode well with them. Well, so you're asking them. It's basically you're asking, you're asking internal affairs to look into police officers and their police officers. You no, know, I'm just saying that. You like, know, I'm, I'm just telling you right now that like uh, the, the the box of uh, fucking uh, you know cookies or whatever, and they say it's fat free. Yeah. No one's authentic. And even no though one's, well, no one's no one's authenticating how much sugar's in the Coca Cola, well, no one's it's offsetting it that like that you know no lot. Lo- well, sugar makes well fat makes flavor, right? Fat is what makes flavor. If you know how to cook, you know well, fat saying, makes all, flavor, all right? So then they that, introduce it into another hinky way of being like, well, now we're going to introduce a ton more salt or a ton more sugar, and we're going are we're going to make 
this particular lab-based thing that introduces a particular kind of flavor that mimics fat. So yeah, it doesn't have fat, All but it has a shit ton of other things that like you're, I'm agreeing with you. What yeah. I'm saying is that, and those things aren't fact checked, but it's a whole host of another bullshit that's so terrible for us that it should have had the fat to begin with. Yeah, well, what I'm saying is you're giving them the credit of actually having gone through the work of actually making it non-fat. Yeah. And they just did other shit. I'm saying they're not even doing that. Now, I'm maybe not. I'm saying that they're just you know. fucking putting whatever in a box and mm-hmm. telling you this is what it is. Fucking eat it. Well, the funny so, thing like, is, is no like South Park did that, right? South Park made made fun of the reference of like Cartman wanting. Cartman was pissed off because like I think they were doing they were supposed to do Sloppy Joe Day, and so he's like it's Sloppy Joe Day, it's Sloppy, and then it's like it was fish, and they were like. Who's the one person who doesn't want us to be happy with the Sloppy Joe Day? It's the girls. And so he goes immediately to, like, Wendy, and he's like, your ass made it so that it was fish. And he's like, we don't want fish. We want Sloppy Joes. And they're like, there's, like, this, like, tiny, like, pescatarian kind of guy who's like, I want fish. I'm like, shut the fuck up. Nobody's listening to you. I want my Sloppy Joes. And then come to find out that they make fun of the character that I particularly love so much, which is Daniel day Lewis's character from There Will Be Blood. Uh, Daniel Plain- Plainview. So yeah. Daniel Plainview comes into South Park and he introduces Impossible Meat yeah. and the the whole I'm a thing. Goo man. Yeah, Goo Man. And so uh, you find uh, out that like all of that stuff is just processed bullshit yeah. that isn't any more healthier than for you than well, or, it's, le- it's less healthier for you than to just eat beef or right. to just you know eat a salad sand eat a lettuce sandwich. Yeah. You know. Or environmental for that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. And he and he even jokes around the the, the trash environmentalist that it does. Yeah. Because it's like they're he's literally going through swaths of land so that his goo can run through a factory. You know. Yeah. Uh, there's no such thing as maybe good intentions when it comes to it's the veil of good intentions, and the, to sure. and to the point where we can make fun of it on the boys, where like the, what was it. The don't, fl- don't spoil. I oh, seen season three. Okay, well, I won't spoil it then. I'll just I'll I'll say what the reference is to it. Where Kylie Jenner can walk up to a police officer and hand that police officer a Pepsi. The police officer opens up the Pepsi and drinks it and be like, "Wow, I'm no longer a racist piece of shit." Thanks, Pepsi. You know, it's just like Pepsi doesn't give a fuck if you're a racist piece of shit. They they want you to drink Pepsi. If, they, if at the clan meeting you have Pepsi and pizza. They're making just as much money. Pepsi's, Pepsi's pumped to be at the clan meeting. <laughs> yeah, they, they so it's like <laughs> is they're they're just as pumped as for Pepsi to be served at the LGBT ra- uh, rally that or the LGBTQ plus parade. They're in both. As a capitalist, I can absolutely confirm this. Yeah, like, well, I'm just saying, like, like Pe- Pepsi doesn't give a fuck if you're if, whether you're you're giving soda out to you know Buddy Dale or you're giving it out to you know uh, well, insert drag queen here. They just don't care, and it's no. the you know, and that, and there's nothing. They, they, everyone looks for this inherent evil. It was like, oh man, there's there's good versus evil. What there is is there's literally there's have and have not, and it's where you're at at the table, Gunny. You know, and that's honestly what it is. And you and you have said it yourself. You would prefer to just be out in the woods, saying, F- fuck all of this shit. And how much do they not? I mean, I say that, yet I continue to participate. Well, we all participate, right? I'm in the Matrix. I particularly talk about how I'm the one eating the steak and drinking the wine the with the, the Matrix. I'm literally talking to the agent and and not particularly caring that I could be on Nebuchadnezzar eating goo with the rest of the, 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 the people fighting against it. I particularly am going to ride this train until the wheels come off. If, you know, And if that makes me a bad person and it makes Joe Rogan a bad person and it makes all of these people a bad person, we are participating. Like whenever someone says, I don't, like they go up to him like, like there's this one woman who was a communist and she was getting a lot of flack for driving a car and participating in uh, the economy that she's in. And she was like, listen, I participate in the economy that I'm in because it's the economy that I'm in. If I could, I would prefer it to be communism, but at this point, I have no say in what 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 bureaucracy is or what I'm doing, and I can I can at least participate in this, own a vehicle, and live comfortably. They, I don't even think they count the votes. I honestly don't. What would they I, need to for? Yeah, what would they I need don't even to? Think they really count them. Well, it's maybe. a unity party, right? So it doesn't really exactly. But I mean, like, maybe maybe in a smaller scale, so that they can <clears throat> that, so that they can tip I it into. That, I think that like the guy who got elected mayor in Taylor probably really got elected. Well, that's probably. what I'm saying. Like in no, a in, like, a, in a, like a minute scale, but what but do they really need to? Like, he hasn't passed the quality control checks to be like a global politician yet. Like, the, yeah. like he'll, How hard is Beto O'Rourke trying to get into that man? He is. He's gonna sacrifice Waterburger to the owl god. I'm gonna tell you all right now. Well, Waterburger's already been. Cons- 
assumed by a private equity firm. Yeah, they're in Chicago, yeah. They're a Chicago company now, so I don't really fuck with them. But, so uh, they're going to put Impossible Burger on there soon? Well, uh, <laughs> Not already. I, I don't know, but I know that uh, I know that whenever they got bought, they put out a bunch of t-shirts saying that Whataburger was Chicago's best burger chain, and I was like, what? <laughs> fuck Whataburger now. Um, but, well, now we have In-N-Out. Oh, aren't you happy about that? You know, now it's just California Whataburger. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. So was like, really? I mean, come on. There was something I was going to say, but I can't remember what it was. What were we just talking about before we devolved into Bill Hicks. <laughs> <laughs> Bill Hicks is a good one. But, uh, we were talking about, like, how, well, essentially, we were talking about the veil of, like, ca- like of, like of positive capitalism, mm-hmm. capitalism you know, and Bieto O'Rourke kind of, like, oh, settle, yeah. settle, so guys, selling I'm out. I'll tell you all right now that there's a very, very slim chance that Bieto O'Rourke ever gets elected. It's because, Ever gets elected to anything? Yeah, because uh, he's, he's just a perennial candidate now. Yeah, well, and he's for everything. Like, I'm, like, I'm gonna tell you right now. Well, he's the dancing monkey that they put out whenever they need someone to seem le- seem. How, how would you say that? Seem legitimate? Like I don't particularly dislike or like Beto O'Rourke. What I don't. What I don't particularly like is that He's somehow. So fake, well, this is the thing: is like, okay, <laughs> like, do, do I even do? I'm Hispanic, and I'm calling him Beto O'Rourke. I don't really feel comfortable doing that. I'm also not someone who particularly cares about the Latin X thing. And also, this is me railing against something that y'all probably don't really care about. But there's this new show on on Hulu that's like pro Hispanic, talking about like this thing is like hugs not thugs. It's this new show. On Hulu, what and type it's of gay shit. Is that? Uh, uh, he's he's basically like the soft one. Thugs, and like, not thugs. Yeah, he's the, he's the soft one. Beat this guy's ass. <laughs> well, that's the funny thing. He's like he's the soft one in his like Latin family, and he's like trying to reform these like old these like ex gang members, right? And there's this older lady who's supposed to play the abuela, right? Okay. But you're uh, but my mom is the abuela now. She doesn't talk like the lady from Family Guy. Good morning, Mr. Peter. Yeah. She talks like me. She talks like every generic Texan around. So I don't need someone, oh, mijo, did you eat your manudo? That's not how we talk, man. Yeah. That's not how your mom talks. That's probably barely how, I don't know if you're Hispanic or not, but that's not how Hispanic moms talk. That's not yeah. how Hispanic grandmothers talk. They haven't talked like that in probably like six generations. But still, for some reason, they you know, and also, no offense to them, but it's not how Texas, like they're, they're filming in California and they want it to be like universal, like every Mexican's going to love this. But I don't particularly see myself as a Los, Los, Los Angeles Hispanic. I'm a Texas Hispanic. We are, we are culturally different. We yeah. eat Tex-Mex. We don't eat California Tex-Mex. I don't put... French fries in my burrito. It doesn't you cook your taco meat with fucking cinnamon. Cinnamon, yeah. I don't put cinnamon <laughs> in my meat, it. and it's, it's just fucking cumin. And and that's the thing is just like I'm not particularly upset that she sounds like the lady from Family Guy. Yeah. But you could at least do the positive of knowing that 60 year old women and 50 year old women were 50 year old women and like they were born in the 80s. They do not talk like this anymore. Yeah. They do not talk like the abuela used to back in the day. They're like ninth generation removed. Yeah. And if your parents do talk like that, I'm I'm sorry to offend you in some way, maybe. I'm not really even that sorry, but I'm yeah. just saying like your mom doesn't talk like that unless she's first generation right. from Mexico. But if this is supposed to be a television Which is an show, incredibly small minority of the Hispanic yeah. population. Yeah. yeah. And the thing is is that you're willing to like put us in a box between six people who were like, oh, now y'all are Latinx. The, the fuck thing, I'm Latinx. I'm not... I think the thing you're talking about is a result of, like, the yuppies in California in control of the content that's being created nationally. Yeah. yeah. Right? Like, there's, like, a group of, like, 500 dudes who, like, really are, like, the decision makers behind, like, what the content that's going to get put on the TV is going to look like. The Netflix execs. Yeah. Well, the class. funny thing is, is that they can get it... They can go through the, through the trouble of making a drag queen... And I'm not trying to be ugly, but they can go through the trouble of making a drag queen palpably acceptable to other drag queens. But they can't go through the trouble of making a Hispanic person palpably acceptable to all Hispanics. It, that that you're doing you're doing much so much of a disservice because I tried to watch the first episode and say, Yo, Vato, why do you look like an Oompa Loompa? Well, That's so, not how we talk, well, man. Just, it's just uh, like, hey, brother, man, you look like an Oompa Loompa. I just, that I just feel like those guys out there are like in such a weird little microcosm yeah. of experience that like it's an echo chamber yeah exactly and and they're and they're and they're they've they've become too committed to representing minority groups and like 
but they I represent don't, I don't, the. I don't want to sound like a mean white dude when I say this. Yeah. Right, but like. They're trying too hard. To yeah, exactly. That's what I'm they're saying. Like, they're like, pandering like, 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 to. And they're. But the funny thing was, it's is like, it's, it's like there doesn't need to be a gay couple in every single thing that gets produced these days. There doesn't need to be uh, a hyper Hispanic, uh, of way off figure in the show that's representing the Mexicans. There doesn't need to be, um, you know, uh, uh, a thugged out black guy yeah, you know, who's you know, just gonna be like yeah, you know, the. You don't need a Mama Shawnee Qua, at, at, you know, in, in the black family. You know mm. what I'm saying? Like, like there's, yeah. it, it's it's much less on the extremes, and I think that they've just gotten to a point where like they're really really bad at what they're doing well the funny thing is is like how how universal how universal is your comedy how universal is even like let's say ozzy moon ozzy moon said something really funny it was like i don't mexicans don't have uh how did he say he basically said like mexicans don't i I know well he's like he's like we don't have like i can't but i'm trying to think of what it's called like where you hand something down we don't have an inheritance like when my grandma dies i'm getting a bomb ass mole recipe or enchilada recipe that was hilarious to me because it's kind of yeah. true. Like I don't have, yeah. I don't have an inheritance from my mom or my dad. We're right. we're lower middle class, and the only thing that I have maybe going forward to me is a bomb ass mole recipe and you know a bomb ass pepper recipe from my dad. He's definitely gonna get some bomb ass recipes. He, yeah, yeah that's, so that's like literally all we have. That's a joke that's universal because like maybe Josh doesn't have the wealth that everybody else does, but he's gonna get a bomb ass recipe for that. Dog. I remember shit. I remember bathing in the river. Yeah, like, that's not a joke. I yeah. remember literally like having so it was to just wash like, my ass in the river. <laughs> so it's like that's the thing is like it's like universal. The, bu- the, the bubbles floating down river. Yeah, like right. real shit. So like that's the thing that's universal is we can we can we can coexist in the time where where we both where we both knew that the the that the that the power that the that it wasn't because it wasn't hot because it was hot it was hot because the power was out and they were just doing their best yeah. you know and and they made it palatable to us so that we wouldn't really have to think about it but now I'm 35 years old and I can think like wow you know they really insulated me from that and yeah. it wasn't an and it wasn't an abuela with a comically over over exaggerated accent to make things better yeah. and it wasn't you know and you can make a you can make a, a, a represented a gay couple that doesn't have to be cartoonish. If Modern Family can do it, anyone can do it. And I mean, in all honesty, man, I think that w- we've come to a point where we're talking in circles, and I love it. But it's been a really, really it's been a great combo. one, man. I think yeah. uh, I wish I would have known what I wish I would remember what Bill Hicks said. I wish there was more we could talk about. Uh, uh, one thing that I always ask before we stop the, uh, the before we stop the podcast, it is S U I L. What did you think of the studio? That's great. Yeah. yeah, I like it. Yeah, so yeah. we can appreciate it, man. Like we yeah. love, we just want to make How it. How does it compare to your other podcast experience? So it, like, <laughs> I mean, I mean, you, you podcasted on a canoe. Yeah, right? so right. So my only other podcast was on a canoe. Yeah. So uh, so we hope that it goes from canoe, and then you come <laughs> here, and then every other experience is like, man, I wish I was that that Taylor Studio, Monkey Mouth Studio, <laughs> in Taylor, Texas, because. This uh, these other studios aren't just aren't holding up. Well, you didn't yeah. you didn't take me up on you didn't take me up on any any weed. You didn't take me up on any drink. You didn't take me up on any DMT, bro. Like it, not you, yet. You're missing out on like at least a solid <laughs> third of what I have to offer here, bro. We're supposed to be getting fucked up in here, bro. So, but we appreciate you coming through, man. We hope yeah. to have you on as much Dude, it's as possible. Been a really, really awesome. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, one thing that I was gonna say is uh, you. Uh, you actually run a show. You run a comedy show in Austin. Yeah. So uh, let's let's hear a little bit about yeah, that. Well, one more plug because his audience, and my audience, are different. So let's yeah. make sure they get to hear about it as well. Yeah. So it's called the Dark House Comedy Show. It's at the Alamo Draft House, uh, Mueller, Mueller or Mueller. Mueller. It's what, I mean, that's how I grew up saying it. Don't, don't, okay. Yeah. Call like, it. Call it Mueller. I think it's Mueller. Mueller, I think Mueller yeah. It's Mueller. Are you talking about I mean, Mueller so, barbecue? So, so here's the. So here's the. Right. Yeah. Well, Mueller Lane. Mueller Lane. Yeah. Okay. So here's the thing: is that you're probably smart. And like know how English works, and they're probably actually <laughs> saying it the right way. Um, and so it's probably what you're saying, but yeah. like uh, it's Mueller and my. Well, mind. I want to assimilate into Texas. You know if, what I mean? If, so if, if you, so you need a cowboy similar. hat, dip, and boots. <laughs> Sorry, now. <laughs> yeah, you need you need an AR-15. Yeah, you need yeah. an AR-15. You need like a hippie girlfriend that's like culturally ambiguous. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> sexually ambiguous. Sexually uh, ambiguous, uh, culturally uh, ambiguous. Just amb- you got a they them girl. <laughs> <laughs> well, dude, it's been a super fantastic time, both yeah. on, both on the ones who woke up and this one. It's been a really awesome. time. Well, we appreciate, appreciate you coming so through. We hope to see you back, man. Thank yeah, you so absolutely. much. Can we? Can you plug your name one more time for us? Yeah, Adam Bowles. Uh, Adam the comic on Instagram.
shut up, you listen to my monkey mouth. As a companion, when you got pun on the canoe route, hopped in a portal and got in a fight. Elias knocked him out. Bow, Naruto fighting style. Bow, you'll see he tapped out. Bow, we win, we get crowned. Monkey mouth, monkey mouth, monkey mouth, monkey mouth, monkey mouth.